Hey, this is Ilka from Sonotype, uh, coming to you today with a quick video on how to find and remediate a critical remote execution vulnerability labeled CVE 2017-8046 uh, with our Nexus lifecycle tool. So the catalyst of today's video is uh, coming from an article that uh, we saw earlier today um, on the register about uh, a critical uh, uh, remote code execution vulnerability that was uh, found in um, uh, uh, the Spring Framework. Now, what's interesting about this vulnerability, it's a remote code execution vulnerability in the REST component and uh, or the REST uh, data project uh, that's a part of Pivotal Spring. And uh, it's quite similar to the uh, vulnerability that was discovered in Apache Struts, which eventually led to the Equifax disclosure. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, reporting about this uh, today, but what's interesting about it is actually when we look at the uh, release notes, this vulnerability was already patched in September. It was uh, marked as uh, data rest one one two seven. So this vulnerability has actually been fixed in um, in the Spring Framework for quite a long time, and actually actually this uh, publication follows the uh, principles of responsible disclosure in the sense that um, um, there's been an adequate time for customers to uh, uh, fix this vulnerability itself. So I wanted to focus today's video on how uh, customers of Nexus Lifecycle since uh, September have been able to uh, fix this vulnerability. So first of all, obviously, obviously um, one of the key uh, functionalities of our Nexus Lifecycle tool is the ability to perform continuous monitoring. So any application that has been scanned with um, uh, with our Nexus lifecycle uh, can be configured to be monitored automatically every day for any new security vulnerabilities. If there are new security vulnerabilities uh, or any other policy violations that you might care about, you will get a notification email like this. This right now is simulated. I ran it today, but um, um, but um, this this type of emails uh, uh, can be run. Uh, automatically once a day, so you will get instant notices on, on, on when new issues happen. Well, if I click on click through to the results, we can e quickly jump into the bill of materials of the application um, that we want to uh, that we care about, and we can actually quickly drill into the details uh, of the vulnerability. So in this case, uh, the vulnerability relies in the REST components of Spring. So we when we click through to the um, adjacent component, we can actually see. That, um, uh, that at a glance already, that um, indeed there's uh, this critical vulnerability that stretches back on this component uh, way back uh, when, but we can also see that actually there are newer later versions that do not have these critical security vulnerabilities denominated by these triangles here in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now, what we can also see is actually this 2.66 version of, of the WebMVC REST component uh, is relatively unpopular nowadays. In fact, there is a fixed version 2.6.10 that uh, seems to be much more popular, judging by the popularity graphs uh, that we can provide with the lifecycle tool. And if we click on it, we can actually audit it straight again on the fly and see that this uh, component uh, isn't uh, is uh, published a month ago. Seems to be a much more popular version uh, to get and isn't affected by this vulnerability anymore. If we want to drill deeper into the details about what the security vulnerability actually means, we can access the uh, detailed uh, security vulnerability information right here in the vulnerabilities tab. By clicking on this button here, we can access our detailed uh, information about this uh, issue. Now, since um, we actually rely, don't rely on uh, press releases, we actually monitor various different security feeds, you know, hundreds of different sources uh, for the Nexus lifecycle tool. Actually, uh, we first fast track this information uh, on the 26th of September into the tool. When I say fast tracking, uh, what I mean is when we identify a security vulnerability that has a relatively high CVSS score, so in this case, um, a pretty pretty high uh, CVSS 3.0 score, um, we expedite its access to the tool so that our customers can be notified as soon as possible about these issues. And within within a couple of days of this original release note, we had this information up here. So in this case, we can see that um, that um, uh, the vulnerability details are, are available and uh, we can also show the root cause uh, of the vulnerability in on itself. So, uh, and of course, we, we link to you to the advisory that was available at the time that Pivotal published um, about this uh, security vulnerability uh, itself. 
So, so um, uh, uh, so um, uh, in this case, our customer should have been protected all the way in September. What's really cool about the lifecycle tool, though, is we can actually take this one step further and actually provide this information to developers in their IDEs as they're working on these uh, Spring applications. And uh, the way this looks like is, you know, let's imagine this is Spring Development Suite uh, for a while and not just a vanilla Eclipse. Um, if I'm working on a project here and I have some components, one of the coolest things about Nexus Lifecycle is we have a plugin for Eclipse-based IDEs, also IntelliJ and, and Visual Studio, where we can show you every single dependency right here in the IDE that gets pulled in into the um, actual application. So users of Nexus Lifecycle will have seen this already in their IDEs as soon as the vulnerability information was in our tool itself. Um, by denominating uh, the component in this red color, meaning that they, it has failed a critical security, critical policy uh, within my organization. Now, even here as a developer, I can already see the same release graphs. I can look into the details of why was this component highlighted. Uh, in this case, I can actually see the exact same information as I could uh, in the uh, continuous monitoring view. And finally, uh, I can actually use this to um, uh, select uh, a better version, for example, this 2.6.10 that we looked at previously. But what's really cool about here is we can actually audit this on the fly, look at the details here. It seems like the license it seems like uh, this is pretty good uh, most of the way. And uh, if I identify a better version, I can just migrate to that by clicking on this migrate button here. So that way I can just select the latest and the greatest uh, and uh, work with that. As, as I need to. So it will do the uh, replacement for me automatically. And when I click finish here, it will actually go ahead and replace the component, uh, execute a build and uh, provide me with an output uh, uh, again once uh, the uh, build has completed. So thanks very much. This was Ilka uh, and showing you how to remediate this, this security vulnerability.